this is my pathways to farming presentation which uh, certainly wasn't able to uh, uh, to give on Wednesday um, I want to this is an invitation actually for participation for collaboration an invitation into well, what for me is a, a world of permaculture um, permaculture being the thing that makes sense the most to me um, in these rather interesting and troubled times that we live in. Um, in my broad experience of working in permaculture is it is something that has the power to bring communities together and around common, uh, fulfilling common needs. Um, Fulfilling mutual functions. Um, a picture is of um, refugees from South Sudan um, in the north of Uganda uh, with a permaculture training team. And, you know, on the other side of the border, they're fighting wars. They're, they're killing each other. And uh, here in Uganda, they're realizing the power of collaboration. Um, that was a very, very powerful experience for me. Um, and I try and relate um, the international work and um, the feeling of a sort of permaculture global with permaculture local and um, this is me advertising um, involvement at Trevor Life Farm where I have a history of teaching permaculture courses and running all sorts of informal sessions and way of bringing people into regenerative farming and, and all the sort of community benefits that, that come around permaculture so you're all very welcome. Um, uh, Trevor Farm is just outside of Oswald Street um, in Powys, and um, uh, actually, it's just right on the Shropshire border, technically. But anyway, so um, I live in Powys. Um, we're doing the same thing here in the, in the UK that um, our friends and colleagues are doing in East Africa, which is propagation, um, using available local resources to develop plants and build growing systems. Um, this is the Tlanrider uh, allotment, that's the little polytunnel at Tlanrider uh, um, Amokhnant allotment. Um, well, it's interesting, it's a beautiful place and, and interesting, but what I've learning from the watching the allotments is as people get older and uh, they lose the continuity of growing um, with whatever all the disruptions that we've, we've had, um, it, it becomes increasingly hard for people to stay on top of what they're doing. And myself and a couple of other local people started to think about trying to run the allotments more like a community garden. Um, obviously, if people want to just have their own separate space and do their own thing, that's obviously perfect, that's ideal. Um, but maybe there's a lot of scope actually for collaboration to make better use of the space to produce more and to be sort of coordinated and have a plan. So um, this is so the first um, area of, of uh, growing for uh, uh, my uh, Pathways to Farming project is to really maximise um, the, the use of the allotment and to collaborate with other people there and to make best use of the facilities that we have. Um, whereas at Trevlak, um, it's which is a um, a family-run stock farm. It's a hundred acres. It's not it's not huge. Um, it used to be a dairy farm, and in the, the last sort of 10, 12, 13, 14 years, even that we've been working there, we've seen it evolve and transition to very much um, being on the leading edge of of, of being a regenerative farm. Um, and from originally just doing a bit of teaching there and, 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 and you know, building relationships there, um, it's, it's sort of become increasingly a focal point for my work. And I think this is something which, um, it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity that I need to seize and, and make the most of. So meet the Trevlak gang. Um, it's, it's a stock farm. It used to be a dairy farm. They grow grass. They grow grass very well and they do it in, um, uh, using um, regenerative grazing practices 
uh, in many different ways, mob grazing and all, all, all sorts of interesting things going on there. They also keep pigs. Part of their mission statement at Trevlak is to grow the fodder for the animals on the farm. So over time, they've greatly reduced the stocking levels, but are um, uh, slowly eliminating the imports of food and energy to the farm. And this is, this is a great thing to be part of. Um, they're also interested in value addition, and they are turning their meat, meat products into choice cuts and also into pies, pasties, and, and things like that. And they have an on-farm shop. So we have footfall, we have people coming there to, um, to, to, to purchase the products, and an opportunity to, to deepen and develop the relationship between the farm and its customers. They have great facilities. This is an oven for cooking pies. Um, they, they, they also have a sort of public bar, lounge area, um, classrooms, and um, a wellness center. So plenty of things that we can sort of link to, link ourselves to. And here's our uh, mandala garden, which I, I want to tell the story about a, a, a little bit as well. But we've, we have um, 20 raised beds, each of four square meters. So that's 80 square meters of raised beds at the farm. And we're building some sort of forest garden edges to it as well. And this is the, so if we're trying to see the allotment, which is where I live within walking distance, uh, half a mile from where I live. The allotment is where we're going to do the intensive growing and multiplying our plants. And then at the farm, we have the opportunity to do kind of main crop um, uh, uh, growing. So I wanted to you know, produce things at a slightly bigger scale. Um, and yeah, slowly, slowly, um, we're bringing the, 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 the garden um, into production. And, and it's been a very, very interesting process. Um, the, this, this garden came out of... Um, a, 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 a permaculture design course that we ran at Treblack Farm in 2021. I think it was in April of 2021. And um, we invited Elizabeth West away from the Griffin Network to come and be part of that and uh, to share some of the work and the research that she was doing at the time um, on nutrient density of foods. Um, we have... Um, Something that I'm very interested in is biochar and the, if you like, the, the universe of, 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 of microscopic organisms that live within the soil. And this seems to be the key um, element about long term fertility but and also the quality of veg that is grown. Um, I'm, I think it was 2020 at the Wales International uh, 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 Food and Farmer Conference. Um, the Real Farming Conference, Real Farmers Conference, Real Farming Network. Um, we were introduced to Ferme du Bec Eloin in Normandy, and this is their wonderful mandala garden. And I thought that's a striking statement, and I thought it was very, very beautiful, and um, it was something that I wanted to bring to Trevlac as to create a growing system that also you know invites the interest of the visitors and people coming to the shop and. And, 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 and so forth. Um, a long way to go though, and I'm not the world's greatest gardener. I'm a kind of a, you know, um, I, I call myself a big picture, long-term thinker. So attention to detail is sort of a, a, a weaker point of mine, but uh, we have ambition. So does the farm. And um, I took these pictures a couple of years ago and you can see there's edges, there's places within the farm that aren't fully used or they have ideas to evolve and obviously it takes time. Um, they have, there's all sorts of materials available. Um, there are old um, agricultural buildings which are slowly being upgraded to become people spaces. A few years ago, this, for example, this was just full of old tractor parts and it's now a lovely, you know, people space. Um, and there's an ongoing kind of evolution and what we found is that this top edge of this of this uh, field just below where this is the sort of intensive animal uh, breeding units this is where all the animal manures are produced and collected and um, we noticed well we, um, we noticed an opportunity to develop our garden just slightly lower down than the buildings that house the animals so we can uh, 
collect water off the roof should be needed and we can obviously compost the manure and move that downhill uh, to support the garden and um, so we sort of developed our concept and we discussed this at length with the farm and we found a sort of operating system that seemed to work for both of us and 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 at the same time the farm as well that's you Steffi um, helped uh, also developed ambition to have its own horticulture growing area so it was a chance for a really nice synergy ongoing relationship uh, between the two and to um, you know get, get diversify what's going on at Trevlac. Now I mentioned the Griffin project now that, that this was really interesting this um, you know we buy vegetables by the weight we buy vegetables by the kilo um, whether but the question is are they all the same and and and, and how, what are we measuring if we're looking at sort of food quality because the Griffin network is growing real food for nutrition and that perhaps we should be tracking and measuring the um, the nutritional content of food rather than just the weight or the quantity um, and of course the difference between a carrot one carrot and another is in so soil which is alive full of uh, microscopic life um, that it is via these relationships that nutrients become available to the plants essentially plants generate sugar and to do anything else, they need to build relationships through their roots with the mycorrhizal fungi um, to the soil microorganisms. And they, it is they then that bring the minerals and make the minerals available to the plants. Um, Chedlak has been, uh, over the years, upgrading its hedgerows, uh, laying, allowing them to grow out and then laying them, which creates a lot of brash. Um, and all this narrow diameter wood, which dries out nicely, can be turned into biochar. Um, biochar has a huge surface area. It's very porous. It folds air into the soil when you add it as a soil amendment. But it also creates habitat for soil microbes, for the soil life that we're, that we're looking at. And um, especially helps develop these mycorrhizal fungal relationships which channel nutrients and water and make the plants much much stronger um, you can measure how nutrient dense your plant is by crushing the sap putting a few drops on the lens of this refractometer and then reading off the percentage sugar content it's a very easy it's a kind of approximate but it's a very easy way to say to see whether your uh, produce is poor, average, good, or excellent. If it's a fit into four categories, and we're very, very interested in the relationship between excellent, high bricks values and um, and the quality of the soil and the soil microorganisms. Um, we've learnt a lot from uh, Dr. Elaine Ingram and and and, and other uh, people who were soil scientists who are really bring this um, these ideas to life. And this is a motivation that we also want to do at Treadlock Farm. We want to produce really good quality veg, but we also want to understand the process and 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 see it as an ongoing research project. Um, the higher the bricks value of your veg, the better they taste. Um, high bricks value veg, tasting great, but also is very resistant to pests and disease. So these things all seem to mesh together into something that is feels very, very important. Um, you know, the main component of Trevlock Farm is the, is the uh, pig breeding. And pigs have a lot of energy. Pigs like to dig and turn. And, and we thought it would be interesting to... Um, mark off the area of the, of the field that we've been allowed to, to use and to allow the pigs to turn it all over. So we're going to sort of mix up all the, the surface soil. Hopefully they'll pull out a lot of the, the, the grass roots. And then we've got something then that we can begin to shape into a garden. We've planted windbreaks and uh, developed our paths and the systems. And we've now completed three years of growing there. Um, and as we enter our fourth, I said to myself, 
I want to do this properly. Um, we've been sort of playing around with it. It's been fun building the garden. I've just been going up there one day a week or even half a day a week, sometimes with volunteers. So this year we decided to focus on it, to double down on the garden and to use the pathways to farming to give us the discipline to work harder, pay more attention to detail. So um, I've developed a sewing plan. Um, I've also started to put into that the notes from the Tamar Organic Catalogue um, to give us that detail, to give us that structure and discipline, which is the thing that I've always sort of lacked uh the consistency a little bit before because i'm often juggling multitasking going away to uganda and things like that so um definitely um this is getting us um uh, to pay attention to detail to learn and, and to share better now when we come to Trevac farm and we see how they're uh, improving the quality of the buildings and the spaces there i first thought about um how we're going to use the veg that we grow is we want to cook it and feed it to our visitors, to our, um, to our students, participants, volunteers. And, and I've, I've tried to think about the, the branding, the marketing, the communications um, and side, which, we, which we've uh, worked with on the course. And we came up with our brand name, <laughs> Enterprise is... Tavi Cartrev, homegrown. Um, I looked at the dictionary in the Webster, uh, look at the, the definition in the Webster dictionary, raised or grown at home, originating in a characteristic, originating in or characteristic of a locality, grown or produced at home or in a specific locality, plants and animals. It's a pop-up restaurant that brings together people, food and place. Um, I, I would love to um, develop this as an idea. I would like to partner with other growers, with, 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 with also cooks and uh, people interested in doing events to engage with the public, um, to talk about permaculture, talk about these amazing and interesting things that we're engaged in. I want to talk about Uganda and, 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 the, and the many, um, so permaculture is really, really taking off there, but it, always, like everything, it needs nurturing, it needs support. Um, I, I, I like the Welsh name too, and I think that that, and um, I put a logo of a dragon. I, I live in a dragon's house and co-op, and I, I think about that as well, um, to try and bring it all into the thing. So look, for a bit of fun, I tried um, an AI <laughs> to make me a little advert, and I fed in some bits and bobs, and, and it generated this little video. So um, it's a bit cheesy with the music and stuff, but I thought it would be fun, and I, I'm also learning and experimenting with these new tools that we have. So um, here's my little advert. Homegrown is a new pop-up restaurant. We have to book in advance and we'll serve you three courses of homegrown, locally grown food. With our meat and vegetarian option. Homegrown part of the Sector 39 Permaculture Network, and we grow at Trevlak Farm in Basel, Basel Street. We have regular events in local village halls and other venues. Please get in touch to find out more. There you go. Sorry about the cheesy music. Um, that's my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, yeah, let's let's work together.